You my brother. I don't care what nobody else say. I love you. You made a mistake. I forgive you, bro. I ain't got no ill wills towards you. See, people all, all day long about they Christians. How can you be a Christian if you're not able to forgive a person that did wrong to you? When you get an example of what true Christianity looks like, what a person who has really understood what it's like to be forgiven by God, someone who can look back on their life and see their sins and then forgive someone who has also done something vile. And I mean, in a vile way to the utmost. Here's a father whose daughter was not only murdered by this man, but she was raped, strangled by this man and then thrown into the bay. It took him six, six years for this whole thing uh, of justice to come about. But this father says what many Christians, I would imagine, probably would not be able to say. I'm not like everybody else, bro. I ain't got no ill will against you. That same Bible that you play with, bro, you get by the yourself, you get on your knees and you pray. Because the journey you got ahead of you, you going to need God. I forgive you. I ain't got no anger towards you, bro. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his child. I sacrificed mine. I was you. I once was you. And in the same courtroom, I was a monster. I'm pretty sure they don't told you about me. I'm the one you don't want to see, bro. You took something from me you can't get back. I don't want no revenge. I gave it to my God. The same God that you play with, I gave it to him. And he took that pressure from me. That I couldn't deal with myself. A lot of people would have suffered if I would have dealt with it. But the fact that it took six years, man, for you to be a man and admit to what you've done wrong, all these people you hurt, man. Oh, phone calls through three o'clock in the morning, man. I gotta get up my bed and go console her. Go get her from the grave site. Four day in the morning. When she there crying about my baby. That's the one you gotta have forgiveness. Let me tell you one thing about her, bro. It's hard for her to forgive. I've been dealing with for the last 17 years. And I'm still asking her for forgiveness. But I forgive you, bro. That's how strong my God is. I come in smile at you today with no harm or ill wills towards you. You my brother. You made a mistake. But you got time. You got time to get right with God, bro. Like I said, I once was you. I was a monster. I was just like you. So if my God can change me to make me a better man, I do that. I celebrate the day. September 13, 2017. I've been out three years. They told me I'd never stay out three years and make it on these streets. Not only have I been out three years, started my own business. For to start another business. For to go to school to be a law clerk. So if it took me to sacrifice and lose my child, because the last thing my baby said to me when I talked to her, she said, Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. And I sat and I wondered, what kind of father am I if my child says she's going to pray for me? I should be praying for her. I should be here to protect her, but I wasn't. That's what I deal with. And I'm pretty sure you know I did the call that for you. I wasn't there for my baby. I'm going to make sure I'm there for my others. Like I say, bro, don't play with God, bro. I ask him for forgiveness. You did wrong. Your mistakes just worse than others. When you get by the cell, you get on your knees and you pray harder than you ever prayed in your life. And you ask for his forgiveness. Because I give you mine. I ain't got no real will towards you, bro. I love you. You're a child of God. But don't play with it. Because if you play with it, he going to destroy you. You take that Bible that them people give you, and you pray. And you ask him to make you a better man. Don't look at this as your life being over. That 15 years mandatory. 12, 24, 2024, I'm still supposed to be in prison. He freed me, he released me. He brought me home. He can do the same for you. Like I said, I'm not like everybody else. I've been where you been at. I'm still supposed to be where you be at. 
but he set me free. That's what he'll do for you. He may not release you physically, spiritually he will. In this, he makes a statement about him being free, not necessarily free physically, but free spiritually. And what he's really making us think about is when Jesus says, whom the son sets free, that person will be free indeed. Maybe not on this side of, of eternity, but going forward. And here is a man who's offering him salvation, offering him what true deliverance looks like, what freedom in the Lord looks like, even in spite of his vile crimes. How hard is it? How hard is it for us to watch it and even hold back the tears looking at this father's pain? But what he's done is he's actually demonstrated what true godliness in a person is, the ability to forgive, even though the person obviously does not deserve forgiveness. Obviously, even in spite of the fact that this person hasn't even asked for forgiveness, but he says, I don't need you to ask. I'll do to you what God did for me. But you pray to God, bro. You tell him that you made a mistake and you asked for his forgiveness. That's how I am. I asked him. He forgave me. And I got to go to the people that I hurt and I got to ask them for their forgiveness. That made me a better man. He holds six years. Ain't none of your attorneys, ain't none of your people reached out and asked nobody for forgiveness. But I'm coming to you. I'm giving you my forgiveness, bro. I love you. I think we should see more examples of a man showing true godly forgiveness. Amen.